This presentation will look at the probabilities for several examples using playing cards. Our first case is a card is selected at random, and what is the probability that it is a heart? To answer this question, we need to figure out how many winners we have divided by how many total. There are 13 hearts out of 52 cards total, so the probability of getting a heart would be 13 out of 52, which of course you could reduce to one quarter. The next question says, a card is selected at random. What is the probability it is a heart or a face card? We know there's 13 hearts out of 52 face cards, jack, queen, king, four suits, clubs, spades, diamonds, and hearts, so there are 12 face cards. So probability of hearts, 13 out of 52, probability of face cards, 12 out of 52. But what's interesting about this is there's some cards that are common to both. So which cards are both hearts and face cards? That, of course, would be the jack of hearts, the queen of hearts, and the king of hearts. So there are three cards that are common to both hearts and face cards. So the probability of hearts and face cards would be 3 out of 52. Now our issue is or. We're looking for heart or face card. Probability of heart or face card would be probability of heart plus probability of face card minus the probability of heart and face card. And we've established these numbers in the earlier slides. 13 out of 52 plus 12 out of 52 minus 3 out of 52 or 22 out of 52. Our next question is, if three cards are selected at random, what is the probability that all the cards are diamonds? So I need a diamond on the first, second, and third. Diamond on the first is 13 out of 52. We're doing this without replacement, so on the second go-round, there would only be 12 out of 51, since one diamond is gone, one card is gone. And on the third pick, third diamond, given the first two are diamonds, we'd be down to 11 diamonds out of 50. So if you want to do this multiplication, probability diamond on the first and diamond on the second and diamond on the third, we get probability diamond on the first times probability of diamond on the second given diamond on the first times probability of diamond on the third given diamond on the first and diamond on the second. So we have these numbers, 13 out of 52 times 12 out of 51 times 11 out of 50. And let's go to Excel to do that computation. So we need 13 out of 52. 13 out of 52, we need 12 out of 51, and we need 11 out of 50. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and make each of these a fraction. So equals this number divided by this number. So that first fraction is a quarter. I'm doing the autofill. We get those numbers. We want to take the product of those three. So we're going to say equals product. And the number we get is 0 0.01294. So the probability of diamond on the first and diamond on the second and diamond on the third is again about 0 0.01294. Our next question is, if five cards are selected, what is the probability that at least one card is a king? So, I mean, you could have one king, or two kings, or three kings, or four kings, or five kings. But when I see at least one, I want to think complement. So, A is the event at least one card is a king. A complement is the event no card is a king. And we are going to try to answer that question. What is the probability that no card is a king? What is the probability of a complement? So, if no card is a king, that means the first one not a king, and the second one not a king, and the third one not a king, and the fourth one not a king, and the fifth one not a king. Well, there's four kings and 48 non-kings. So for the first one being not a king, it would be 48 out of 52. But then what would happen after that? 48 out of 52 for the first one, but now there's only 47 non-kings out of 51 for the second draw. Now if the first two are both non-kings, now there's 46 out of 50 non-kings, 45 out of 49, and 44 out of 48. So we need to multiply all these numbers together. So again, we're going to go to Excel. So starting at 48. 47, we are going to go five numbers down. One, two, three, four, five. And starting at 52, 51. And again, we will scroll these all the way down. And each one of those is a fraction, so we'll say equals this number divided by this number. 
and we will scroll all of those numbers down. We want to multiply those together, so 48 out of 52 times 47 out of 51, etc. So I will again say equals product, and we will highlight the numbers we're interested in multiplying. And what does Excel give us? 6588. So the probability that no card is a king is about 0.6588. But remember, we were interested in the probability that at least one card is a king. So the probability at least one is a king is 1 minus the probability that none is a king. So the probability of A is 1 minus the probability of A complement. Probability of A is 1 minus 0.6588, which will give us 0.3412. So continuing, probability at least one is a king will be 0.3412. Next, we're going to look at combinations. So we say 5, choose 2. We write that either as 5C2, as you'll see in many textbooks, or as I prefer using this notation, parentheses with 5 on top and 2 on the bottom. Again, we read that 5, choose 2. It means how many ways can two items be selected from a group of five? So if you think of a pizza place that offers five ingredients, how many different types of pizzas can you have with exactly two ingredients? What are the combinations? So thinking of it this way, we have five items, A, B, C, D, E. We want to select two at a time, not concerning ourselves with order. You could have A and B, A and C, A and D, A and E. Those are all the ones that have an A. B and C, B and D, B and, D, B and E, C and D, C and E, or D and E. So 10 possibilities, 10 ways for us to combine two elements out of 5. So we say from this, this tells us that 5 choose 2 is 10. In general, here's our rule. N choose R is N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. And look at the example we just did. 5 choose 2, 5 factorial, over 5 minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, which you can see reduces to 10. But we can also get combinations from Pascal's triangle. Look at the 5 row. This 5 choose 0 is 1. 5 choose 1 is 5. 5 choose 2 is 10. 5 choose 3 is 10. 5 choose 4 is 5. And 5 choose 5 is 1. Down here on the ninth row, 9 choose 0 is 1. 9 choose 1 is 9. 9 choose 2 is 36, etc. So the combinations are all present in Pascal's triangle. And here's the question we're going to look at. If five cards are selected at random, what is the probability that three are diamonds and two are hearts? Thirteen diamonds, I need three of them. Thirteen hearts, I need two. But now there's 26 other cards, I don't want any of those. And in total we have 52 cards and I want to select five. So we're going to use these numbers to determine that probability of getting exactly three diamonds and two hearts, nothing else. So again, the way this works is 13 diamonds want three. 13 hearts want 2, 26 other cards don't want any, divided by 52 choose 5. So we're going to go ahead and use Excel to determine these numbers. So the first one I need is 13 choose 3. And the way Excel will do that is we're going to type equals comb in, 13 comma 3. We also need 13 choose 2. So we're going to write equals combin, 13 comma 2. We need 26 choose 0, which if you have 26 ingredients, how many pizzas can you make that have exactly 0 ingredients? This would be 1, but I'll show you how to do that. Equals combin, 26 comma 0. Indeed, it's 1. And then our denominator is going to be 52 choose 5. 52 choose 5, which we're going to write equals combin. 52 choose 5. Putting these together, I need equals the product of the numbers on top. And then I want to take equals that number divided by the denominator, divided by this number, and we get 0 0.0085. So looking at this indeed, the probability of getting three diamonds and two hearts is about 0 0.0085.